So I guess it's time to start. Video is ready. <laughs> Almost. Okay. Uh, so welcome uh, at this very early morning for the DSA BOF. DSA is for Debian System Administrators team with Fidel Liambotis. And uh, I will follow the questions on IRC if there's some some other Debian system administrators are already are. on IRC. And yeah, there here are, you go. There are following. Um, so hello, I'm, my name is Fedon Liambotis. I'm part of uh, the Debian system administration team. Um, the team uh, is that. It's Luca Filippozzi, Martin Zobel, uh, Hellas, Peter Paul Frader, Weasel, um, Stephen Grant, and since last year, uh, myself and Tolef, we are the two uh, newest members. We, were, um, we joined the team um, last year after DebConf. Uh, unfortunately, none of the others could be, could be here and join us, although I think there are no IRC, most of them. Uh, it's also unfortunate because I was the least active member of the team, but I uh, <laughs> happened to be here. So um, our duties is to... Um, to maintain the Debian org machines, basically, um, except alias. But um, when we talk about DSA uh, administered machines, we're talking about um, the machines that are all of Debian org. Uh, we do general sysadmin there. We do um, the accounts and LDAP, um, some core services like mail and DNS. And we provide support, and we provide servers and support to teams that are on Debian, like FTP master or bugs master or um, Porters and Build D and so on. M multiple teams here. I won't um, talk about all of them. And um, we also deal with uh, hardware faults, and we deal with our hosters. We deal with um, our local admins. So if we have a hard hardware fault in one of our many locations, more than 30, uh, at one point was even 50, I think, uh, we talk with them. Uh, we use we use Puppet a lot. We use Git a lot. Uh, UDLDAP is our custom um, LDAP interface, LDAP configuration, account management, basically. Um, we use Munin and Agios for monitoring, and RT for our bug tracking, and many, many, many other tools. Um, so since last year, since the, the last year's buff, we had some. Um, New things. So we we met up in Oslo in March. There's a mail in Debian Develop announced for that, but in case you haven't read it, I'll talk a bit about that. Um, so first of all, what, what we discussed was um, the long-term infrastructure plan, so also known as the five-year plan. So according to that plan, um, all core services, that means uh, basic services plus FTP master and web servers and so on, um, must be under warranty at all times. We had, this, we had a situation in the past year where we had some very old machines, um, uh, very slow as well. Uh, they weren't under warranty. Uh, we basically were waiting for them to fail and so on. Um, so our plan is to be able to use Debian's funds or uh, sponsorships to renew this hardware every now and then, and keep at most five years, and also buy warranty for these five years. And we want to use also server-grade hardware, rather than um, individuals saying, I have this uh, desktop PC or this old server on my um, basement, I don't need it anymore, like, let Debian have it, and then we use it for something core. So we instead want to use server-grade hardware, and um, maybe use uh, money donations for that, if we don't have any hardware donations for that. Um, additionally, we want to um, centralize into three to five core locations for three to five thousand locations for our core services. So now we are, as, we said, as I said before, we have 30 locations, and this is too much. Uh, this is um, also this is problematic with communication with uh, hosters. So what we want to do is consolidate into three to five. There are some special restrictions, um, like that the FTP master needs to be in the US. Um, so this is an exception. Um, there's also, this also doesn't affect portable boxes and build these, because 
for um, this kind of hardware, you usually need uh, some special different hosting, like, for example, uh, at ARM. Um, but this is, affects all the core services. And we also want to use virtualization for that. Like, we believe it's maturing as we speak, and um, it makes sense for us to give um, new services a new VM in one of these uh, central locations. Um, finally, we talked about um, users and groups. We want to do some cleanup and um, for security reasons, like disable and use uh, shell accounts. We, there are over 50,000 shell accounts on Debian machines in, to in total, in some. Uh, we would like to move on by disabling most of them if they're not used, and, but not uh, prevent people from doing work by providing an automated way, like a signed mail, for them to be activated. Uh, with the same um, direction, we want to also periodically confirm group memberships, like a yearly mail, perhaps, that says, here's the groups you're in. If you don't want to be in any of them, reply to this mail, or the other way around. Um, the, the goal of these two actions is to reduce exposure, not remove anyone's privileges or stop anyone from doing work. And um, another thing that uh, we're talking in this meeting, uh, but this is also, um, there was work done before the meeting, is um, the new single sign-on service. This is still work in progress, but there are some uh, services that use it already, like um, Munin or um, the new uh, NM website. The goal with this is to have um, one single password, not the password that you have for um, uh, DB, but a different password that you can set. And this will be used by all web services around Debian that want to somehow authenticate um, members of the project. Um, you can contact us by um, Debian admin at least Debian.org. This is a list that includes also local uh, admins. Or Debian admin at Debian.org. This is only the core team. Uh, we used to hang out on IRC Debian org at Debian hash Debian dash admin. Um, and of course, for all requests, you can file up uh, a ticket in RT. So this is mostly a buff in the description of that um, schedule because we really want this to be a Q&A and get input from you or questions or anything else you want to ask DSA about. Do you use SAN for storage? What kind of SAN? We use uh, HPMSAs on one of our sites. And local storage for some other things. Uh, the MSAs are being used to host uh, virtual machine images mostly. And FTP master. How many machines have we actually got, and where are they? So some idea of how much stuff we So we have to. around 135, 140 uh, physical machines, plus another 40 now, I think, of virtual machines. And um, the, the central locations that we uh, host machines, the three to five, are um, the University of British Columbia uh, in Canada, um, the Metropolitan Area Network of Darmstadt, um, the Greek Research and Technology Network. Um, we have some machines at uh, the Oregon State University. We have some at MIT. Um, in general, we have many locations for many machines. These are the ones with most um, machines there. We have some at uh, SIL in Austria. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. <laughs> So of those 140, are a lot of those build these in only a relatively small number of core machines? Yeah, the, the, this includes build these and portal boxes, which are the number of architectures times two or three. You mentioned some 
um, goals in reference to centralizing the servers. So what are the major issues about, about from the you know, move of the service itself uh, in reference to you know, universities and hosts and providers itself? So um, the, there are two issues here. One is that um, we're having many locations doesn't scale. You have too many people to talk with. You have too many um, issues to work with. Um, the other thing is that we really want to, the, the criteria that we set for choosing these locations is that we want really professional hosting. We don't want um, people's basements or um, under the person's desk. We want uh, data centers with re redundant power, uh, with air conditioning, with um, IPv4 and IPv6 outer space, and the ability to manage our reverse DNS. Um, we want responsive uh, hands-on, like if we have a, a failure of, or we need a disk replacement, we can ask and get a reply soon, rather than repeatedly ask, um, and re hence responsive local admins. Um, in general, we want something to be reliable and professional, and this is not the case for many of our 30 locations. But for the ones that we chose, this is, this is the case. And uh, we also want a lot of rack space, so we don't want small host locations. We want to have as many machines as possible. So hosts that give like 10U or half a rack or a rack maybe, it's ideal for us. And good connectivity, obviously. I wonder what, what considerations have been made about the, like the risks. So I mean, if you have all the servers in three to five locations, it seems like if you, it seems like if you lose one hoster, uh, which seems even more likely if they're hosting more machines, if they're, bas they're basically, you know, they're, they're doing more for us, uh, it seems more at risk. But what happens if you lose a, a location, 33% of all of the machines with it? But that's indeed a risk. Um, however, as we told before, these are really reliable hosters. So they are more reliable than most of our current um, hostings. So we're hoping it won't come to that. Um, that's one case. The other one is that these are in very diverse locations across uh, the globe. And everything that's important, we're trying to uh, have it in multiple sites. And also note that this doesn't include mirrors. This is, this is about central infrastructure, not the mirrors. Yeah, I, I guess I was thinking in terms of uh, you know, there's, there's changes in the organization there, and they decide to no longer donate those resources to Debian. We, we can always find alternatives. We have more than three to five offers, so we can always move things. But usually we, we, we ask for some commitment before moving things into such a location. And we've got that commitment from all these organizations I talked about, about before. So what is our sustainable budget for hardware? How much are we spending at the moment, and how much are you proposing we change that by having better kit? Um, I don't remember the exact figures. Uh, it's certainly more than uh, we're currently spending. So we're, this is um, a considerable amount of money uh, that we're, we ask the DPL. Uh, the DPL seem to be open to that. I don't remember the exact figures. Uh, I think we're posted on the list as I'm, I'm I think, um, yeah, but it, it's, it's an amount of money to have good hardware. We, we also get discounts from vendors, and if we can get free hardware, we're open to that as well, obviously. Um, we also, one of the things we discussed at the meeting was to ask, uh, to have a sponsorship page to, that we can ask for money more effectively from, for, Sponsors like um, we were looking at FreeBSD's sponsorship page, which they list their sponsors, and they say these people have been kind and gave us like platinum sponsors or something like that. Um, our, our current sponsors page is really outdated. Um, it has some entries that are people who donated like a, a disc or something, and on the other hand, they don't have some major sponsor of ours. So we want to change that and be able to be to to give more visibility to our uh, large sponsors. And if anyone wants to help on that, would be welcome. Uh, 
Um, you mentioned that uh, master has to be uh, in the US. Can you just? It is explain? for legal reasons, as far as I know. But uh, some export control of the US. I'm not really sure of the details. Uh, maybe someone else's, but as far as I know, for legal reasons, FTP master should be in the US. So we can't really move it to another hosting location. Um, another thing was uh, I wanted to do thanks for all the effort you made in publishing all your SVN, Git, and configuration repository for uh, Puppet, Nedios, Manin, or whatever. It's really great to publish that so people can get inspiration yeah. from that. These are public. All of our Puppet configuration is in uh, public Git. All of our Nagios configuration is in public Git and several other things. Um, most of them are in uh, some DSA, DSA uh, machines, the Git repository, but we're mirroring them on uh, Git Debian org. So if you go to Git Debian org, there's a Debian dash DSA, and there are um, multiple Git repositories that have all of our um, infrastructure. Uh, we also have all of our documentation, uh, our internal documentation uh, in the public. It's on uh, a wiki on dsa.debian.org. So anyone can look there and see what, what we're doing and how we're doing it. And in general, we don't mind getting asked on how we do this. We're fairly open with what we do. Um, about single sign-on, would it be possible or, envision, or has it been envisioned that we could expand this to non-DD users such as uh, guest alias or devconf attendees, for example? I think it has been discussed, uh, but we're not there yet. Um, I think devconf attendees will be Hello? Yeah. Um, it will be even harder, um, since there is no such thing as authentication of these other than the devconf infrastructure. works now. Anyone else? Come on. Sorry? What is done with the old hardware? With what? What is done with the old hardware when it's removed from the data center? Is it sold you know, on eBay or whatever? Uh, not, not as far as I know. We usually um, give it away to hosters or other projects. This hasn't been done very much into the past because we used to keep old hardware. And we have like 10-year-old hardware in production. But uh, slowly we want to change that and have more current hardware. So DSA seems like quite a large team these days compared to what I remember in the past. Does that mean that you actually have enough manpower? Um, so we're a large team. Not all of us are active at all points. So for the past year, for example, I wasn't very active due to some personal uh, issues. Um, we're always welcome more manpower, as anyone. Um, unfortunately for DSA, it's hard to give DSA uh, status to more members because that means roots on all machines. And that's not something we can easily do. However, we can accept patches on our Puppet repository. We can test them, review them, and, and push, th push them ourselves. And there are also some low-hanging fruits that um, someone could help us with, like uh, Python code, um, like um, UDL up and rewrite of it, and so on. And that's much needed, and we haven't been able to push that yet. So yeah, help is still needed, as always. Uh, 
I, I guess it comes under one of the later sessions today, but do you actually do you have a plan already for the virtualization stuff you'd like to use, or is that still a question right. to decide? So, so we used to use um, Libvirt and um, KVM. We're trying uh, nowadays Ganetti, um, which is something that will be presented later on today. Uh, we still with KVM, and Ganetti is offering us a cluster management for our, our, our across machines. So we've installed it already on um, a cluster in um, the University of British Columbia, and uh, the new UDD, for example, is being hosted there. Uh, and we're planning to use that more if it works well for us. Okay, I guess I was thinking more of stuff like uh, Juju scripts to just kind of instantiate a service so that we could, you know, at the drop of a hat, recreate the box that does blah uh, very easily, uh, you know, make new build these by just having Juju scripts for it and all that kind of cloudy nonsense that people do. Uh, <laughs> it might actually be quite useful if we have a problem with hardware that breaks. You can just set it up again, but I don't know whether that's actually practical or not. So with Ganetti, we can easily instantiate new VMs. Uh, we haven't made plans for something that automated yet, like Juju or something like that, or anything cloudish that would allow random users to create VMs or us being able to recreate VMs easily. Uh, we're not there yet. It might be something that we need to consider for the future. I don't know. Just a short information from IRC from Martin, Martin that says that the budget for hardware replacement is 20K, 25 to 35K per year, uh, which is not the actual money that flows in, but the planned money that should flow out. So if you have ideas for money to flow in, please contact ESA. <laughs> As far as I read IRC, it's the plan. We have a spreadsheet that we made that has this number and a plan for the next five years for all the machines. So we, we took all of our current infrastructure, put a five-year plan, and looked at what we need to renew this year, next year, the year after that, and so on, and estimated the cost. This can vary a lot because of discounts and so on, but. This is an estimate, ballpark figure for the DPL. It's also been mentioned on IRC that uh, it's not to be forgotten that most buildings are not on mainstream architectures, so it also creates a sort of problems. Other questions? For people who have Debian.net uh, machine, an official one, um, what are the infrastructure that can be used um, by them to, for instance, uh, authentication of DDs and stuff like that? This was explicitly discussed on how we could integrate SSO with Debian.net. Um, Zobel is working on that. Um, I think there is a plan, although there are some restrictions on what to do with that because this single sign-on things works with cookies and you would want someone to be able to impersonate someone else on Debian.org. So it, it's a different security domain as far as I remember, but I don't really know the specifics. Zobel is the main driver on this and he'll know better. And this is still a work in progress, as I said, so it, it's, it's being targeted at though, Debian.org. Other questions? This is somewhat related to the Debian.net, but not completely. <coughs> In that, that discussion, one use for Debian.net was mentioned that it's kind of an incubator of new services. So um, do, do you actually prefer if people do it that way on their own machines or someone else's machines, not DSA maintained, and just use Debian.net for these 
new services they're trying to uh, get into the project, or would you actually prefer to have these things on DSA maintained machines from the beginning? And if yes, are you also willing to give people access to try out these act experiments? So incubating services into your own servers and Debian.net domains is, is fine with us. So the, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Um, talking with DSA early, when you're developing a service that you intend to make it an official service at the end, is good because then we can perhaps find some areas which are not acceptable for us or for the project. And talking about it early might help them, might help catch, catch them early instead of working on it for a long time and then just dropping it on DSA. Uh, as for access, we've been fairly good at that, I think. Uh, especially nowadays with visualization, we can uh, create a VM and put the service there and give access there. Um, that being said, I mean, it, there are many things that people work and don't really finish, so it's a big overhead for us to maintain a large fleet of VMs. So if someone is serious about something, yeah, sure, we can talk about hosting a DSA. Could you talk a little more about the single sign-on plans? What are you basing it on? Um, so, again, Zobel is um, the one driving this. Um, he's using a software called DAX, uh, as far as I remember. Sorry? I think it's DAX. I'm not sure. uh, sorry? Yeah, um, this is a web single sign-on solution that it's packaged in Debian. It was easy, um, easy enough to install. Nothing too complicated. We look at SIML and it was a bit complicated. I've had some experience in the past with that. Um, this is a simple thing that's using a, an Apache module, as far as I remember, that you can put in front of services and it will uh, authenticate users against a central SSO. Uh, I'm sure that when we have like, something more concrete to, to announce, there will be a program announcement with technical details as well. So uh, from IRC, uh, the, there is a question from Martin. Um, what do, do you want from DSA that is not done yet? Nothing. We want more ponies. <laughs> we too. Answers to that question, other questions? Everybody's reading mail. Um, fundamentally, as far as I can see, the DSA folks are doing an awesome job. Um, there's always more things that come up. Uh, whenever I've had any dealings with the team, they've been very responsive, very helpful. Um, there isn't really anything I can think of that, that I want, want more, apart from just to say, thanks, guys. You're awesome. Anything else? Any other question? So in that case, we can thank the speaker. And uh, we meet in one half hour for the next topic about uh, Xen, I think. Thank you very much.